learning. It might be said that acting is an, an ever-learning process that draws its lessons from life. And we'll be discussing various acting methods and techniques with Uta Hagen and two prominent actors she has helped to develop, namely Fritz Weaver and Barbara Barry. And later in our program, we'll discuss the business of casting with three casting directors. And then we'll talk with aspiring actors who intend to make their mark in the industry. We welcome now to our program Uta Hagen, who was seen most recently in the film The Boys from Brazil and on Broadway in Charlotte. She's also an acting instructor at the HB Studio in Manhattan. And we welcome Fritz Weaver, who has starred in numerous stage, film, and television productions. His recent stage work includes the off-Broadway productions of The Beko Request and Dialogue for Lovers. His film credits include The Big Fix, Black Sunday, and The Marathon Man. And on TV, he has been seen in the, mi in the TV miniseries Holocaust and Captain's Courageous. We welcome Barbara Barry, who has also had numerous stage, film, and television credits. Her recent film work includes Private Benjamin, Breaking Away, for which she was an Oscar nominee. She's also been in the TV series Breaking Away, TV series, I'm sorry, Barney Miller and Diana, and the TV movie The Summer of My German Soldier. Her recent stage credits include The Prisoner of Second Avenue, and California Sweet, and I should get an award for reading all those credits. I was going to say, now it's Bravo. time. <laughs> Bravo. Well done. Now it's time for the first intermission. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds, though, that it seems as though acting is an ongoing process, the way Mary Helen presented it. It's not something that you learn and then you stop and you go on to your career. Would that be a correct statement? It's the way I feel. I don't think many people feel that way, but I do. I've often, I, uh, I believe that acting is a craft and a very difficult one and a very taxing one and one that you never stop learning completely. And I think we understand it and everybody accepts it in the other performing arts. A musician who stops rehearsing or practicing will be in trouble. A dancer who stops studying is in trouble they can't even get on stage and I think that uh, we realize that everywhere else except in acting and I believe it's exactly the same thing there are probably lay people who may look at an actor and say gee it's just a question of learning your lines and having some personality and maybe an ability to to create some other images of other people is it more than that it's a, a not only not, it's not that at all. Mm, okay. <laughs> it's not more than that. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, I think, let me, let me be opinionated for a minute. Please. Okay. Um, I am on a constant bandwagon um, and uh, feel passionately about this and get in despair about what I think the theater, uh, what acting could be and isn't most of the time. I think the obligation of the actor is to learn how to be on stage, whether it be in Shakespeare or Moliere or Clifford Odets or Neil Simon, a human being, first and, and last, a human being, that human being that the author has posed on, on the page. And I think the, tr the sadness with the theater is that actors learn to copy other actors. Mm. And they learn to, I mean, to the point where if they, they pride themselves in college, if they walk down the street, that they, they are recognized as an actor, which means that they're phony. They're not human beings. You know that they're an actor because they behave peculiarly. <laughs> and they, uh, uh, when they, what they, many of them aspire for on the stage is to be like other actors rather than like human beings. And I think that's the hardest thing in the world to learn and is not pursued enough. And uh, uh, there are many, many schools of acting, and the one that I'm always against is the one that is it's predictably an actor on stage. Well, Fritz, you were a student <laughs> of Uta Hawkins. Is that what she... Still am. All right. <laughs> is that what she's still teaching you? Oh, absolutely. And this goes on all the time with Uta. I was just thinking, as you were speaking, three summers ago, I was at, out at Montauk, which is Uta's summer place, Uta's and Herbert's summer place, and we sat on the back deck, and I was, you and I were talking about a project I was about to do, and you said something which made the scales fall off my eyes again after <laughs> all those years of when we worked together and I carried that into the production I was doing. I think I wrote you a card from Vienna telling you uh, 
how important what you'd said. I'm not going to say what you said. Well, why, why, why can't you share but it? it? No, it had to do with, uh, I think you see, uh, in line with what you're saying, that it's an ongoing craft. You're always sharpening. You can also go astray. Uh, um, uh, after many years on the stage, you can, you can suddenly lose sight of what you're doing, and you need to be frequently put back on the rails again, and uh, this frequently, is what this lady does for me so uh, often. Apropos of what you were saying, frequently you will read uh, in a criticism of a particular actor, unfortunately he or she has become very mannered. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, yes. Because I guess it got a but laugh. You see, the audience, you, when I say that I'm, I'm, I feel very lonely every now and then, the critics also accept, and so does the audience. They are absolutely willing to accept something that is a recognizable, to me, old-fashioned dead form. In other words, if you do enough Stereotype. of this, they will accept it. And they say, isn't that wonderful? And he's so theatrical, and she's so theatrical, and it's so exciting. <laughs> And I think at its very best, it's like watching a tightrope performer uh, uh, perform brilliantly, possibly. But I don't believe that they're human beings. And that's what I demand when I go to the theater and what I demand of myself if I'm on stage, that I believe I exist as a human being in that time and place. Barbara, how do you prepare yourself to go on stage? <laughs> <laughs> You I think I must be done, a I run the 104 bus, and then I get down to the theater. No, listen, this is hard for me because, uh, you see, I wouldn't even, I really feel I wouldn't have had any career with, w unless I had studied with Uta. I wouldn't have had a career. I didn't really know how to act, and, and yet I was earning a living. And, and mm. Uta used to say, you're very slick, you're very slick. I have to find out what makes that slickness go, and we have to tear it apart. And all the time I thought it was wonderful. And then it turned out it wasn't. And then I had to go through a painful period of relearning. Mm -hmm. And I still think, gee, it's amazing. I earn my living doing this. I can't believe I do that. It's really because of Uta. <laughs> so that whatever she says uh, is, is the best that of anything anyone can say. And as far as my own preparation is concerned, I'm serious when I say I get everything straightened at home. And I go down to the theater. And I take 30 minutes to myself. And I do a lot of praying. You know. <laughs> and then I go on and I think, I just want it to be fresh tonight. I want it to be fresh. I want to be a real person. I want to give somebody some little thing that maybe will help them with their lives. And then I go home and I take the dishes out of the dishwasher and I cover everybody up and I go to sleep. Glamorous sounds, life, you mean. Yeah, right. Exactly. This sounds a little bit like the Emperor's Clothing, that, that story that we're talking about, something that's so intangible that you clearly see, but it's hard for the non-actor to see. But you see, oh, of course it's it, it isn't intangible at all. It's extremely extremely tangible. However, if I would sit down and try to explain a basic technique in, in ballet or in, in piano in two or three minutes on this 20-minute segment, I, I would do you a disservice to start. I can only say that it is not intangible, it's not mystic, it's not peculiar, it is, it is, uh, uh, it's not fancy, it's, uh, I think that art the, the essence of art possibly is intangible, but not a craft to, to uh, uh, teach you to function. First of all, you have to learn about human behavior. You have to understand yourself as a human being. You have to see that you're a million different people and that your own concept of yourself is a cliché. Uh, uh, now that's a good one. Let's stop there. That your yeah, own I, concept all, of the, yourself. Now, I, always, I can do this. I'll okay. do this. I'll make you laugh. Uh, I say, if I would go only on my notion of who I think I am, I couldn't play anybody. Because my notion of myself is that I'm a child of nature, that I am generous, kind, free, <laughs> open, that I run through the landscape, that you the, do. the, oh, <laughs> come on. Uh, no, then I walk, like now I have this image of how I seem and how I look and what I am, and it's about this big. I walk down the street, I catch myself in a plate glass window, I say, who's that <laughs> peculiar, dumpy-looking, crazy woman walking down the street? It has nothing to do with my inner image of myself. Mm. Now, within myself, I'm mean. I am uh, uh, unbelievably shy at times. I am unbelievably vulnerable. I can, somebody can hurt my feelings so fast, isn't even funny. Now, that's not my image. My image of myself is that I'm tough, that I'm open, that I can cope with anything. I do the dishes unbelievably well <laughs> and scrub the floor well and paint the house and all that. But I have a million negative qualities. I can 
uh, be a snob. The psychiatrists say, though, that the other's better. To think I'm terrific, I really like me. No, no, no. Well, I do. I adore myself, obviously. But <laughs> she adores I all also, of herself. Uh -huh. I also know that I am capable of many other things, which I think the people who swallow the fact that they have negative qualities are maybe uh, need a psychiatrist. Mm. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that the capability of drawing on oneself to bring a human being on the stage is boundless. But now, Fritz, you've heard this, speaking of cliché, no one can teach acting. You are born an actor. No, no I know. Oh, I, I'm glad you said it's a cliché. As I was saying, nobody is, uh, can teach you how to play the piano. You are born well, I, to play. Below, I almost said a four-letter word. No, you, 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 can, you can learn so much. But that, that's the thing. I, when I first uh, met Uta, I was uh, acting on blind instinct, as, as most young actors do. You go and get a job, and you run around, and you just do it. And, um, and then I played with her. And I was in a stock company, and she was uh, trying out a new play in Bermuda. And she was... Uh, it was a, a revelation to me because I noticed one interesting thing. You, you got better from the opening night. There was on a rising curve, and uh, you were always so full on stage. And I never knew whether I was going to be full or empty, or uh, it was going to be good one night and bad one night. And she was always on a very high and transcendent level, and I thought, I gotta have, I need this, I want it. <laughs> so you remember, I said, can I study with you? And you were very gracious, and you said yes. And that, Do you know there's I a lot? I didn't, I said I would be thrilled. I no, would... oh, no, no. Oh, so... I do want to bring I... up this, though, this business of teaching acting. We hear about the method school, and there's the Herbert Berghoff school, with you, Uta Hagen. There's uh, uh, the Actors Playhouse, and apparently, all of these methods evolved, in some sense, from Stanislavski. Absolutely. But how is it that from Stanislavski, in this country, we have, <laughs> well, probably more than I know about, six different no, more. Uh, groups all claiming to be teaching the Stanislavski method. Mm. And uh, there's some saying, only I mm -hmm. teach the Stanislavski method. I don't teach the Stanislavski method. I learned from Stanislavski. I do think that the, the whole contemporary way of, of playing would not, there wouldn't be any teachers if it weren't for Stanislavski, there's no question. Uh, what Stanislavski recorded, and this was peop what people forget, that Stanislavski went to great actors like Salvini and Chaliapin and pumped them dry. How do you make this work? How do you make that work? And began to record the way in which genius actors worked. So he didn't invent anything. He was the first one to... to codify. To codify, uh, yeah. uh, actually, uh, or to try to. And I don't think any of us have learned the ideal way. I mean, uh, mm. uh, and we never will. And there will always be an enormous difference of opinions. A teacher communicates what he believes to, a, to, a, to another person. Now, the way in which I communicate, or the way in you, which you would communicate, maybe the same idea will be different. So there, there's no way of regimenting uh, uh, teaching ways. I think that a lot of what's taught is baloney. And uh, I'm sure that the other teachers think that what I teach is baloney. And I think the, the there young There does actor, seem to be a fair amount of bite enormous, backbiting among you. Enormous, enormous. <laughs> no, I don't backbite because I never name names. <laughs> I really don't, and I would drop dead before I would name names. Well, be, don't do Life that. Life is too short for that. But I want to ask Miss Barry, one of the... I'm truly a fan of yours because I've seen you both on stage and in film and in television. And you seem to be able to adapt easily to both those mediums. Is the technique different for you? Uh, for example, one potato, two potato was something that you did, was the very first thing I ever saw you do. Is that a different technique than doing something like company on stage or on Broadway? I think, uh, I think it's only different in, insofar as it, it, there's a size involved there. There's a size of, of what you do because the camera records what you think. And it's very difficult sometimes to, to, for an audience in the back uh, row of the Winter Garden to see what you think. Uta used to say in class, if your intention is clear, you can whisper anything and it will be heard to the last row of the house. I find that my kinesthetic place in space is different from when I'm on a stage, uh, let's say at the Booth Theater, and, and from when I'm in a little tiny room with a camera here. It's a matter of ki kinesthetics. It doesn't have anything to do with technique, it has to do with size. And I think that my feeling about acting technique is only that 
it, what I learned from Uta Hagen was that the inner, the inner me and the outer me must work together, that there's an inner you that has to be trained just, just as a ballet dancer is trained. And that's very hard, arduous work, and it takes a long time. And you're lucky if it works. It won't work eight times a week, but, you know, you hope that it will. In film, however, in, on stage you have a handlebar. You have the other actors. You have the duplication of the same space night after night. But on film, you don't have that necessarily. You have a camera, and you may have to do the same piece over over and over again to get with the director. Yeah, but you wants. do have the other actors. He's sitting right there by the camera, and you can look at him. And if he's a really good actor, can he I will say something give about you film. Sure, you sing the. Anything Having you made want. only two, and you have both have made so many. You were awfully good, though. In oh, Boys I tell from you, Brazil. I think that medium <laughs> is for retarded people. <laughs> <laughs> I think that to make a movie, I made one. The Boys from Brazil was okay. There so was only one scene. Uh, so it wasn't torture, but the other one where I was on the set for three months in Murphy's, California, waiting for <laughs> camera setups, I said, let me sweep the floor so that I can feel I'm functioning here. I have never felt so unfunctioning as an actor on the screen. Now, I would... I don't know what I would rather play in the streets for free than make another movie. I, th I think it's that agonizing. But didn't you do Boys from Brazil after that? Yeah. And, and it, but when you got, that, by that time, you were so devastating in that film. Mm -hmm. you, it was uh, so I, no, wonderful. No, I, I wasn't. I could, I can, I'm just, it was just as devastating in one scene of the other one, which was a contained scene. I don't mean that. I mean, didn't but, you learn to like it better? Uh, oh. No. Oh, no. You, uh, you see, e even in that scene, in the, the boys from Brazil and in the one, the only scene which I felt worked in, in the other one, in the other, it was with the name of the movie, The Other, uh, was when you play something that goes from here to there, and let's suppose that it's an emotional scene, it has its own dynamics. And every time you do it, the dynamics are slightly different, if you really do it. Mm -hmm. Now, what you see... Oh, I get so excited. My heart is pumping. <laughs> what you see on the screen are little pieces of the master, little pieces of the uh, cross-shooting, uh, an occasional close-up, and each one has totally different dynamics. So you have not seen me act. Oh, but Uta, I, you sat I on the bed. The first you one, sat on the bed in the other. You sat on the bed. You had a scene on the bed. That's the one I mean. I and will never should, forget that scene. Uh, it's an eighth of what I can do. It's an eighth of what it is. Well, you, how do you feel about it, Fritz? You're sitting there so quiet. No, uh, no I have I'm no just control over I, it. That's what I don't like. Well, it is a director's medium. Totally, and I think it would be wonderful. I don't want to direct, but I think for the director it would be unbelievably satisfying. For the actor who loves what he's doing, I think it is... The pits. We won't... Say, okay. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. That, I mean, I, I, I do think agree. More, more survives of of you from one take to the other than you know than you believe are but i know what it is when it hangs together yeah i also i know that yeah. i'm sorry <clears throat> would you like to direct Fritz? i'm still learning about acting I, I i i don't i've never felt this the compulsion to do it because i feel still so much i want to do on this side of it because it's surprising to me the number of young actors and uh, to a lesser extent i unfortunately actresses who have become successful directors of film and i suppose it's That's because true. they've been doing it for so mm -hmm. long as you say they understand about cutting the piece here and the close up there and the long shot there but uh, it doesn't appeal to you it's wonderful for those who who must do it but i i'm still compelled to do this and to uh can more. i throw an accent something that you're going to come up with in the next two sequences casting Casting and aspiring young actors. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize they were all going to be on, so I thought this would be half the program, which would be my opinions, big mm -hmm. mouth opinions. You see, I think that these young actors and the casting people, if they are in the maelstrom of what, of Broadway, of films, of uh, uh, series on television, of um, uh, soaps, I don't think aspiring young actors have a problem. Now, I work with 150 of them every week. Uh, I think that if they train themselves correctly, and I think that if they are diligent and learn how to maneuver 
they will get jobs. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, absolutely. And as many well, as what's they wrong want, with the ones who are out of work? The, uh, they have not learned to maneuver. When you say maneuver, you mean physically or maneuver people? People. Uh, manipulate. Manipulate. Maneuver and manipulate. Really? You oh, mean absolutely. Other people? Uh -huh. Really? Oh, yeah. And I think diligence, by diligence, you see, I consider myself very diligent. That's why I got a job right away. And <clears throat> got lots of jobs. Now, maybe then I didn't like the kind of jobs. Then I was in trouble. But to get jobs, if you, and I'm sure every agent who is going to come on will agree with me, and casting agent, if you are persistent enough, by law of average, you will get a job. Mm. Now, that I think you can... The next thing, what, whether it's star quality or star radiance or an extraordinary, combined with luck, these are other things. I think the, and this is what I wanted to say, the artists, the actors who have a problem in America are the actors who want to be serious artists. And I think they have a problem. I don't think anybody else has a problem. Oh, so you're distinguishing between just working and being and an how, artist. And how. Okay, what was your first job? My first job was Nina and the Seagull with the Lunts. <laughs> well, that wasn't At bad. At age what? Was it 18, 17 or what? 18. 18. My first job. No, my first job was when I was 17, which was... It started uh, rather uh, well. Which was uh, Ophelia with uh, Eva Galleon and Hamlet. Uh, that also wasn't hay. Now, mm -hmm. the...